Let's now look at the exact same question that we did from the previous video, or the exact same situation, I should say, just with specific questions. Let's actually look for the object's actual displacement after a certain time has passed, and then its velocity after the same time has passed here, instead of just trying to generally describe it. Now, here is the actual parametric curve graphed out. And so if I'm looking for the object's displacement, that's from the starting position to whatever the ending position is. Here we're looking at six hours. So that, that's somewhere in here, and I want to know that displacement there. Now, just like we have learned with vectors, this displacement vector, of course, will have a x component, and it's going to have a y component. And the way we would get that x and the y component is by actually substituting in to my equations. All right, now I've actually come out with my uh, x and y components by substituting that in for the displacement. It was 123 kilometers, and then for the y-axis, uh, excuse me, x-axis was 132 kilometers, uh, and the y-axis was 123 kilometers there. So now, now I know my components, and just like with any vectors, the way I combine them to find an actual hypotenuse or the resulting vector here, the displacement, is Pythagorean theorem. And so we'd come out here with a, uh, a displacement away of about 180 kilometers. Let's now look at what we do to answer number two. We have, we want to find the dune buggy's velocity after six hours. Note, uh, I'm plugging in six here because uh, my graphs and my equations, if you actually look here at the axis, uh, are actually in terms of hours and then uh, my positions are in terms of kilometers. So this equation's in, in terms of kilometers and hours. That, that's why I can just plug it in as is instead of converting back to meters and seconds here. Um, so if I'm looking for the velocity after six hours, I don't have equations for the velocity. Instead, I have an x position equation and a y position equation. I need an x velocity equation and a y velocity equation, meaning I need to take the derivative of both of those. So after taking the derivative of those two equations, I cleared the page, that way we had room, and took the derivative of my x, took the derivative of my y, that gives me my velocity equations over here. Now once again, I'm looking for not just the velocity in the x-axis or the y-axis, I'm looking for the actual velocity. But I'll get my x component from my x-axis equation, I'll get my y component from my y-axis equation. So let's substitute in six hours in both, get my components, and use Pythagorean theorem to combine them. Now I have my two components to find the actual magnitude of my resulting velocity, we use Pythagorean theorem. So this dune buggy at the six hour mark is moving at approximately 19 kilometers per hour, 19.4 uh, kilometers per hour. Now I missed a huge step on my last problem that I solved, number one. I just gave the magnitude of the displacement, but displacement is a vector. It has to have a direction. If I don't have a direction on it, I have only solved half the problem. Let's not make the same mistake here with velocity. Let's go ahead and get that direction using inverse tangent. And I would come out with an angle here of negative 55 degrees, which actually doesn't make any sense. Come back up here and look at this graph. Uh, at the six hour mark, according to this angle, we have a trajectory down into quadrant four, negative 55 degrees. That would be a trajectory coming down like this, but that's not true. In reality, we have a trajectory that is 180 degrees opposite of that, coming up like that towards quadrant two. So we need to add 180 degrees to this. Plus, you can even look at the components to figure that out. What quadrant or where should the angle be if we have a negative x and a positive y? That should be quadrant two, and this is in quadrant four. Add 180. Now, my actual angle here came out to be, uh, if I remember correctly, 55.49, and so I rounded it down to negative 50, uh, rounded negative 55, although you might have rounded slightly differently depending on what your calculator is, but with how I rounded, 125 degrees, giving me a final answer of 19 kilometers per hour at 125 degrees for its velocity. So besides my mistake there on the displacement, please remember that I didn't get an angle on the displacement. You would need to go back and do that. Remember to use inverse tangent uh, and then double check that it's going, that it's in the right quadrant. It should be, both of those are positive. Um, then you would have solved for the uh, displacement, we would have solved for the displacement and the velocity at the specific times, and th that's the pattern you'd go about solving for anything specific. You have an x and y equation, those will give you the components that you need. You might have to take the derivative if it's a position to get a velocity equation, but that's how you would get your components, is from the uh, parametric equations. Use Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent. Uh, to combine those two components to the actual displacement or the actual velocity, or if you had to, let's say, go to, to the double derivative of position to get to the acceleration, use inverse tangent uh, and Pythagorean theorem to get your actual vector.